Imagine long lines of people standing out in the cold in front of a bank with locked doors, just trying to pull out some of their hard-earned money before the bank collapses so that they can buy groceries or pay their rent. In your mind, you might think of an old black-and-white Depression-era picture from a history book, or you might think of some, quote, third-world country. You might be thinking that bank runs and people losing access to their money couldn't happen in a first-world economic powerhouse like the United States, but the recent failure of Silicon Valley Bank shows us just how fragile the entire financial system is and why cryptocurrency is needed now more than ever. Hey everyone and welcome back. This is the Part-Time Economist and in today's video we are talking about the second largest failure of a financial institution in U.S. history. That is the failure of Silicon Valley Bank. Now I want to be very clear, this is not a financial advice video, this is not an investing video. I'm not telling you should invest, you shouldn't invest. I'm not saying the global financial system is built on a house of cards. I'm not saying it's not built on a house of cards. You get the point, do your own research, make your own decisions. With that being said, I want to very briefly go over what happened with Silicon Valley Bank, some of the implications, the ramifications of that, and then also why this is so important for cryptocurrency and why it shows us how much we truly need cryptocurrency. So let's go over just the very, very basics of Silicon Valley Bank. Essentially, as you can see in this article, it was quite simple. There was a run on the bank. There was some financial troubles. The bank had invested in some treasuries with low yields, and then the Fed started raising interest rates, and the yields went up, and then there was a shortfall, so they wanted to issue more stock to raise capital. None of that really matters, because at the end of the day, virtually every bank in the U.S. and most other countries doesn't have enough cash on hand to redeem all their deposits. That means that virtually every bank could be the victim of a bank run. Now, I want to be very clear. This isn't gloom and doom. This isn't conspiracy land. This is simply the way the financial system is set up, and there's a very good reason for that. If I am a bank, I have to pay employees, I have to have office spaces, I have to do all these things. So if I have 10 customers and they each give me $10 and I put each of those $10 bills into a little box with their name on it, I am going to go bankrupt because I have no way of making money. So what banks do is let's suppose they have 10 customers, each with $10, they know that all of those customers are not going to come in at the same time to redeem their funds. Maybe in a given month, only one person comes in. So out of that $100, they can loan out $90 or invest in $90, right? That's the idea. And again, this is the backbone of the financial system, which under normal circumstances works pretty well until it doesn't, until people lose faith in the system, there's a bank run, and then as you see, the bank simply doesn't have enough cash to cover all the demands for withdrawals. And that's basically what happened with Silicon Valley Bank. And as we see here, people are lined up trying to get their money. These are people that have been diligent, that have savings. They simply can't access their money to meet their necessities through no fault of their own. And that is where cryptocurrency comes into play, because let's look at these individuals. On the one hand, yes, FDIC does cover deposits up to $250,000, but that is not by any stretch immediate. Under a best case scenario, it can still take several days, which can be very important if you've got bills that are coming due. And if you have more than $250,000, you are basically just a general creditor. Anything over that amount, you're just hoping that you can kind of get something out of the estate sale from the financial institution. And again, I want to be very clear. These are people that are not speculating. These aren't people that are going out here and trying to get rich quick or investing in wild growth stocks or highly leveraged crypto products. These are just average people trying to save money and use it to meet their daily expenses. And that is where the promise of cryptocurrency comes into play. Now, 
Before we talk about crypto, I want to be very clear. I am not talking about Bitcoin. I am not talking about Ethereum. I'm not talking about Doge. I am talking about the underlying theory behind cryptocurrency. I will be the first to admit there have been a lot of scams in cryptocurrency lately. There have been a lot of pump and dumps. There has been, even with the well-respected cryptocurrencies, there has been some massive, massive price decreases that have made them not so great investments for a lot of people, right? Not investment advice, just saying some people have gained money, some people have lost, but they're not like a sure fire path to wealth, right? That being said, let's think about the underlying premise of cryptocurrency. You, as an individual, you are the only person that has control and access of those funds. You are the only person that can send them. You don't have to have a bank sign off on your transaction. You don't have a bank that can go bankrupt. The idea behind cryptocurrencies is to create a digital form of cash. Now, why is that so important? Because cash is highly useful. We can trade it peer to peer, right? So I can buy, I can sell. It doesn't matter if a bank goes bankrupt. If I've got cash under my mattress, I can still go to the store and buy food. If I need to pay my rent and there is a power outage, right? I can still do that as well. Cash is peer to peer, which means nothing can get in the way of two people making an exchange. However, Cash also has a lot of disadvantages, especially in a digital world. It can be time consuming to carry. It can be bulky to carry. How are you gonna make an online payment with cash? Are you gonna wait two weeks for the mail? So what cryptocurrency does is it solves this problem by giving us a digital form of cash, something where just like cash, we don't have to rely on a bank to process our payment we have the cryptocurrency, we can send it to anyone that we want. And this is why I think this is so important because remember, the people whose money is locked up in this bank right now, they didn't choose to have this happen. They weren't trying to gamble or speculate. They simply needed a bank, right? It's kind of a necessity to make online payments, to interact in the digital economy. You have to park your cash somewhere. You can't just opt out and keep it under a mattress. So what crypto does is it gives us the choice to accept personal responsibility for our funds and safeguard our funds ourselves. We don't have to deposit them at a bank where the bank lends them out and makes interest while we bear all the risk. It empowers individuals to take control of their finances. And like I said, there have been scams in crypto. The price of cryptos has went down, but I really want you to think in the abstract theoretical sense. Cryptocurrency is designed to empower individuals to take control of their financial future to where they don't have to trust a bank that is gambling with their money. Things like this is what really gets me passionate about cryptocurrency and it's why I make these videos. As always, this video is not financial advice. I do appreciate you watching and I'll see you next time.